Hey guys, it's me, Miss Norris, and welcome to We Steam on Wednesdays Wednesday, where every Wednesday in the month of October, I'll be sharing a story that is related to STEAM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. Today, I'm going to, to read you the story, The Girl Who Thought in Pictures, the story of Dr. Temple Grandin, and it's a true story of Dr. Temple Grandin, and it's a great story, and it really teaches you to just to never give up and keep believing in yourself. If the story, The Girl Who Thought in Pictures, the story of Tim, Dr. Temple Grandin, was written in 2017 by Julia Finley Mosca and was illustrated by Daniel Riley. And it's a great story, and I'm ready to share it with you if you're ready to hear it. Here we go. The Girl Who Thought in Pictures, the story of Dr. Temple Grandin. And right inside the front cover, we have a whole bunch of cows. And I'm not sure yet how that's exactly related to Temple, but I guess we're going to find out. Oh, and more cows. And even more cows on the title page. It seems as though we're going to have cows throughout. Yay. If you've ever felt different, if you've ever been low, if you don't quite fit in, there's a name you should know. Temple Grandin's that name. In her tale, you'll find glory. So get ready, get set for this cowgirl's true story. So Temple Grandin starts out on a farm. Oh, maybe not. That's where she ends up, possibly. In the city of Boston, one hot summer day, a sweet baby was born. It was Temple. Hooray! Unique from the start, an unusual girl. She loved spinning in circles and watching things twirl. She was born in the summer, and she's been unique ever since. And she especially likes watching things twirl, and she likes to spin herself. But some things she hated, like certain loud sounds, or bright, or bright crowded places, large cities, and towns. Frilly dresses with tags made her itch, pull, and tug. Something else that she hated? A big squeezy hug. So, just like everybody, there's certain things that Temple loves, her farm, and some things that she doesn't like. Loud noises, frilly dresses, and, and squeezy hugs. Some people just don't enjoy being touched on their bodies, and that's just how different people's bodies work. You always ask permission. A shy loner, this temple, but when she got mad, when her feelings of stress and frustration got bad, quite a tantrum she'd throw, kick, holler, bang, shriek. Yet, still, by age three, not one word did she speak. So she was able to show her feelings by kicking and screaming and growling and banging, but not with words, not yet. She'll never be normal, was what some did say. Her brain's not quite right. You must send her away. Away? Not my temple, her mother proclaimed. We will figure this out. You should be ashamed. So when Temple was young, a lot of times doctors didn't always know what was going on. And they said, Temple's not going to, she's not going to be normal. And you should send her somewhere else. Could you imagine how scary that would be? Both for Temple and her mom. But her mom said, uh, I don't agree with this. We're going to figure it out. 
Then, little by little, though sometimes she balked, special teachers helped Temple, and one day, she talked. And that thing with her brain, it was autism, see? She was different, not less. They finally, all, they all finally agreed. Like most kids her age, she loved ice cream and art. But the way Temple thought, that's what set her apart. If something was mentioned, for instance, a fly, in her mind, she'd see dozens of photos buzz by. So we've learned that Temple was diagnosed with having autism, which means that she's not less, just different. And the way she thinks is different. And when she hears about things, her brain makes pictures. Lots of pictures. When the time came for school, let's just say that was hard. Kids taunted and chased her all over the yard. They picked on poor Temple. How crazy it drove her. They teased her for saying things over and over, and over, and over, and over. And they're throwing things at her and saying, look at her. And she's just repeating that because it's a soothing thing to do for her. Until finally she snapped. Yes, she did, lost her cool threw a book at a kid, and was kicked out of school. No one really got Temple. But, well, then again, the truth of it was Temple didn't get them. You need time away, said her mother, or said her mom. That's what's best. You'll go visit your aunt on a ranch way out west. So, Temple was teased and teased and teased, and finally she had enough. She threw a book, and she ended up getting kicked out of school. And her mom didn't know quite what to do, but she said that what she, what she needed was some time away, and she sent her with, to visit her aunt on a farm. Oh, that must be a little bit scary. And guess what? Fitting in on a farm was less stress, since the pigs didn't care if her hair was a mess. Quite a sweet spot she had for the cows in their herds, such big, gentle beasts who knew nothing of words. As she watched her new friends, a thought popped in her head. These cows think like me in pictures instead. So it turns out that being away was what Temple needed. It was less stressful to be around pigs because they didn't care about her hair. And she kind of loved the cows and felt like the cows thought in pictures just like her. It's her people. <clears throat> At a new school that fall, Temple found more support and a teacher who taught her, you'll never fall short. When you find what you're good at, like science, you'll soar. And that teacher was right. He had opened a door. So she built a machine like she'd never, like she'd seen on some farms, an invention that hugged her with boards and not arms. It worked. She had done it from memory, it's true. And just like the cows, it made Temple calm too. So it all depends on how much support you're given. When Temple started her new school, she had a science a teacher that believed in her and said, if you believe in it, try do what you're good at and you'll do a great job. And then she started thinking about how to be calmer. And she thought of her friends, the cows. And from her memory, she built a, a machine that could hug her in a way that hugged the cat, like the cows got hugged, and it helped. 
<clears throat> I'm special, she thought, like a bright shooting star. My attention to details could help me go far. Through her studies, she learned there were farms not so kind. I will help them, she said, some solutions she'd find. So Temple started realizing that she was special and that if and that her way of thinking could help her get really far in life. And then she learned that there are some farms that don't treat their animals with kindness. And she said, nope, and I can help. I'm going to make this better. She's thinking of all the different ways she could help some cows be happier. And then something cool. Can you guess? Could it be? Off to college she went, a degree. <laughs> she earned three. And though ladies weren't experts on farms at that time, do you think that stopped Temple? No way. She did fine. She stepped through that door and went forward, no tears. She took on the world, but at times, she had fears because some things were scary, like people she'd meet who'd ignore her ideas and, well, wouldn't be sweet. So just like most people, there's going to be, everyone's going to have some people that are that treat you really well. And every now and then you're going to meet someone who isn't very sweet to you. And it might bother you. But if you can move past it, you can have a really good life. Temple did. <clears throat> but she never gave up. Learned her stuff through and through. Like why cattle will circle and what makes them moo. To build better farms was her goal. She would do it. Be kind to our creatures. They have feelings. She knew it. So she studied and studied and studied cows and said they they have feelings too. And she knew it. She didn't she didn't just think they did. She knew they had feelings. But slowly. I'm sorry, and slowly but surely, she changed many minds until farm after farm built her, uh, her awesome designs. Word spread about Temple, her feats, not so small. Temple Grandin? She's grand. She's the grandest of all. So you can see they, she's helped a lot of farms now, and it wasn't quick, and it wasn't overnight. But she didn't give up and farms started using her plans to build places for cows to feel kindness and sweetness. <clears throat> now, for these things and more, she won honors and prizes and a movie was made. But the biggest surprise is that girl with the future that couldn't be bleaker. Yes, the once silent girl. She is now a big speaker. Today, she spreads hope with her stories and speeches. From New York to Sydney to Rome, Temple teaches. Each person is special, so unique are our minds. The world needs your ideas. It takes brains of all kinds. So you can see, it took Temple a while before she learned to speak. But now she flies all over the world and speaks everywhere. And she talks about how, how we need all kinds of different minds. That if we all thought the same, that that would be very, very boring. So here is the lesson. Feeling odd or offbeat? Being different might just be, being different might just be what makes you so neat. Don't let doubt hold you back for not for not for one minute more. Stand tall and like temple, 
march right through that door. The end. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Tempo Grandin is a real person. And in this story, she has written the reader a letter. And this is a picture of the real Temple Grandin with her cows. And the letter says, Dear, dear reader, as a child, I was really glad that my mother always encouraged my ability in art. I encourage you to find something you are good at and work on developing it. If you're interested in becoming a scientist like me, find cool new ways to look at things such as microscopes and telescopes. Explore nature. Think up your own hands-on science experiments. Keep learning, especially from your mistakes. Temple Grandin. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you really enjoyed this story, The Girl Who Thought in Pictures, the story of Dr. Temple Grandin. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, please click that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. I hope you keep it steamy, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.